questions when you do something that nobody else are doing. Nobody questions when you're doing what everybody else is doing. I believe the ordinary can achieve the extraordinary. To prove this, I'm doing something that has never been done before. How do we do it? <laughs> oh, that was close. <laughs> Save. Oh, Holy shit. Big and juicy. It's out of shit. It's out of fancy. Yeah, it's in. Always thinking, always thinking, aren't you? I'm packing up in my tiny bedroom. This is mine, and this is Anton. Yeah, that's Herman and Nicholas. What do you feel about it, Anton? Let's see. <laughs> Before we get to the Drake package. It's just a big unknown awaiting. It's very heavy, that's 60 days of food. So I've just been measuring out 60 portions of porridge, 60 portions of milk. Wow, that's really good. Yes, good job, mate. Let's go forward. Let's go. Right eye, Sandrine. Safe travels, I hope your engine is good. And we are off. Day one of <laughs> 33. You ready, Ian? It's the last time we're going to see land for a long time. I'll turn to you as soon as possible. Hi, Fadi Anders. I will just say we sailed out from Shuai. I stood at the The iceberg. So, yeah, thank you thank for all your support and help the last det er jeg sindssygt glad for, så vi kunne lykkes med det hele. Nu har vi samlet et fantastisk team. Nu handler det bare om at komme sikkert frem og lykkes med Iceman. Jeg elsker dig, og jeg elsker ja, jeg er alle sammen mor og Amalie og dig. Jeg skulle også hilse fra Anton, at det er telefon. Okay, hej far. <laughs> vi, øh, vi tales ved at ses på den anden side. Jeg ved ikke, hvor længe vi har telefon på det. Men, øh. hey. What's your first memory of Anders? I actually don't know what the first memory. I just have this um, um, image of him with a cap. So when he was young, he used he wore a lot of caps. At Yahoo's and some some dreng var han det mest glade dreng du kan forestille dig. Altså fra hans nulte til hans syvende år eller sjette år, der var han en fløjtende dreng. Anders as a child was very bubbly, very playful. Sådan. Og han, en ting, da han var dreng, altså før han startede i skolen, der havde han altid en kasket på, en cap.
Og så øh, var han altid løb rundt til alting og var altid glad. Og det blev taget væk fra ham, da han startede i skolen, fordi hans øh, skole i børnehaveklassen, der var hende lærer inden der var der. Hun tog hatten af ham, altså kasketten af ham. Og det var også at tage hans identitet væk, men det gjorde man dengang. Og så blev den jo ligesom forsvandt den. I think in his early days he just I think he had some anger. Something happened around when we became teenagers. I felt like Anas was kind of distancing himself from me and I didn't really know why I remember. I was just like I felt very excluded from his life. He didn't really want to communicate. He didn't really say anything. I didn't know if we were like ever going to get that close again and if this was just how it was going to be. Der har været et eller andet der bremsede ham fordi at øh, øh, ja, hvad det har været, det kan jeg ikke rigtig definere. Altså, og så så man som forældre, så fortæller man jo også hvad der er rigtigt og forkert, og det er jo ikke altid det rigtige som man har gjort, men man har gjort det i den bedste og på visning i det på det tidspunkt man var i livet med de erfaringsgrundlag man har ikke som forældre. Øhm, men hvad der har holdt dem tilbage, det ja. I don't know. My brother was working as a as a management consultant, and from the outside, at least I believe, well, that's it seems that that's what he want to do. But I can see now that he was he was conforming and not flourishing. He had just followed this path for so long in terms of what the society wants him to do and maybe what his family thought he should be doing. And in the family, we always knew that Anas was the kind of person that has to work for himself. It's an area timekeeping will be very, very important. Players already having to report at specific times to training. Check this out. My next guest just accomplished a tremendous feat. 50 Ironman triathlons in 50 states in 50 days. Sounds impossible, right? Not for the man they call the Iron Cowboy.
Why do you think nobody has ever done an Iron Man in Antarctica? <laughs> yeah. This is day zero, we could almost call it. Ground, yeah, day zero. And we got support from Mr. Anton. From bro. The brother. In the middle of the winter, he wanted to go in ice water and try to swim. I was like, I'm going, I want to see that. <laughs> there we go. One in. In my mind, I was not saying, you cannot do that. There was a small part of me saying, you know, you, you, know, you could pull this off. At this time, I had, I had some experience with being in cold water in the military. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, come on, come on. 35. But what I kind of pushed him was then show. <laughs> Finally, can you can you be in ice water? Can you show improvements? And can you show that you're actually uh, moving towards that? Breathe. Breathe, motherfucker. <laughs> So it's day two of the seven day ice swim challenge. My entire body is trying to tell me not, not to do this right now. More than a minute. Really cold today. Day seven of the Iceman Challenge, and um, yesterday was a tough one. But today I'm trying to push it further. Yes, come. Still and Pass pro, do you That's fucking cold. So, day seven. It's so cold. It's difficult to. Hold the camera steady. Eleven minutes and five seconds. So good. Stark. The Zach man. I don't think I knew where I was going until this moment in the gym where a chairman of the, of a company that I've been working in told me that I couldn't swim four kilometers in ice water. For me, when I look back, that was, that was the trigger point of realizing that people will tell you what you can or cannot do without having the foundation of knowing what is possible. The people who didn't think I could become a football player, they hadn't been football players themselves. They hadn't gone through that journey. The people who told me that I, it was too risky to start my own business in my early 20s, they hadn't started businesses themselves. And I think that was just a realization saying, you know what? People have no idea what they're talking about. They have their perspective on what, you know, what is realistic, what is possible. And without thinking about it, they place that upon you and then you have to sort of accept it as the truth or reality, which is not the case. It's just their perspective on, on life and what is possible. The thing is, it, it's an, it was a natural thing to say, and obviously he didn't think about it. And that's the whole point of it, that often we don't think about what we're actually telling other people. But that has an impact. You know, it's like the math teacher telling a kid who's 12 years old that you're not good at math. The kid's going to live his entire life Believing that, right? And that, that's, that's the whole point, being aware of what you tell other people, especially kids, because they, they're gonna accept that 
for the rest of their lives, even though it's not true. That's what pisses me off. And that's what made me say, you know what? I hate the freaking cold, but I gotta do this. I believe the ordinary can achieve the extraordinary. To prove this, I'm doing something that has never been done before. Completing what I call an ice man. I'm gonna swim 3.8 kilometers in ice water, bike 180 kilometers and run a marathon on Antarctica. People tell me it's impossible, but I want to show you that limitations are really only perceptions as to what we can achieve. My name is Anders, and I promise you, you won't regret following this crazy journey. There were 10 spots on the expedition team. One was for myself. Two for polar guides in charge of everything on the glacier and setting things up. Then two for uh, the skippers sailing the boat. Four videographers to document the journey. Then there was one spot left and the question was whether I should bring a doctor or my brother. I was doubting him, I was doubting myself, I was doubting the team. Didn't seem like a super good idea for a team with very little glacier experience to go on a continent that's pretty much just one big glacier. Anders sent me a document from Phil, our uh, expedition guide, that I needed to sign out. It was basically Phil wondering about our previous expedition experiences. And I remember reading through the document and be like, uh, oh, uh, I don't have this. I could maybe have some of this, <laughs> but it was basically just blank. It was fucking terrifying knowing that, you know, the closest hospital was on another continent and the closest rescue wasn't a helicopter away, it was a, it was a military plane. Uh, traveling up this walls. Yeah. Um, and for the team? and be safe enough. That is a big concern. It's a very big concern. I know there's a big hole there. There's a reason I know there's a big hole there, because I pulled somebody out of that big hole there. It's OK, we can always get another brother for you. <laughs> Don't record that. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that, OK? The two biggest dangers for inexperienced people. Number one, falling in a crevasse. If you fall in a crevasse without a rope, there's a very high chance you aren't coming back. Then there's the weather. If the weather closes in, uh, as it does so very quickly, you can easily become lost, become hypothermic. So we're talking about things that will kill you. Here and it is. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Get in there. Oh. He told this idea 
And I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. But you know, it was still just talking, right? And then suddenly he starts taking things serious. Hi guys, welcome to the first block of Project Iceman. And then I realize, okay, you know, this, this could be fun. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? How are you gonna brand this? What's your goal here? Like, I, it was just my curiosity, you know, asking these questions on a Saturday afternoon. It would take approximately five days to get just to Antarctica. Well, from a shrine, yeah. yeah. I think if you want to do this properly, you want to be running and cycling on snow, correct? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be good. And then I started actually helping him, like, seeing this is fun. Now we need to pitch, we need to fundraise, we need to brand, we need to actually go out with this message. I've done, I've done some stuff in this sport. And uh, when I first heard that he was attempting this, I gotta be honest, bro, it was like, that ain't happening. Like, just... Okay, dude's done one full distance triathlon, zero credibility, he's got no resume. And so now you're gonna add in the element of freezing cold and you're gonna add in incredible amounts of fatigue. That's a recipe for disaster. Obviously there's a lot of struggles of training in Denmark and trying to prepare for doing an Iceman in Antarctica. Like, you don't really have any chance of getting into super cold water or biking in snow or in ice, anything like that. So, Anas was constantly forced to, to go to extreme places to try and train. Shit. Okay, so uh, you're ready now. You're in your wetsuit. This is perhaps the biggest challenge of the Iceman. Swimming in the cold water. How long are you going to swim? We'll see. We'll see. No goal. Okay. I remember himself being quite concerned before going in, because we were standing on the rocks looking out and you see chunks of ice and a lot of current and it was a, quite a new experience for him. He just barely touched the water before going out. He was in there for probably half half a minute. Yeah, done. Done. Come on. It was just a wake-up call. If, there was, if I had done it with a boat or there was a beach, like where we did the first test, that would have been better. I mean, if I go down 30 meters, 50 meters out, that's, that's it. Did you ever consider doing it in Antarctica? For years, I toyed with the idea. I put a team together. Um, I, I just couldn't figure out the water side of it. Trying to figure out how to safely swim, not only with the wildlife, but with the temperatures. You're at such a high risk of hypothermia. Like, th those are some big dice to roll. really annoying that it's so cold for my face getting under and I can't cut I mean right now I can't can't manage the pain okay. to keep are you really I really just want to get my head on the water and start swimming properly but I can only do it for like five seconds ten seconds maybe because of headache ah uh, it's Fucking annoying! But it costs nicht. You just know that it's good. Yeah. Good effort, man. So the plan is go a bit out and then go down.
and then swim back and forth a few times and try to get to the uh, 500 mark. Success. He was obviously really, really happy with his achievement. 500 meters is still something in those conditions, but uh, still far away from uh, four kilometers. Hi, yes, Fury. I'm Anders. I'm 28 years old from Denmark, where I'm right now in my apartment in Copenhagen, where I've since I woke up this morning. I've been planning the Yes Theory Seek Discomfort Master Marketing Campaign. Looking forward to say what you say. Cheers. Looking forward to hear what you think. Cheers. Today. I felt a ultimate physical low. Um, in terms of energy, being on top of things, feeling well for the past few weeks. I haven't really had a, a sort of new next physical goal except for the trip coming up in a month. The focus has been on more the business side of the project. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. Did your brother have a childhood dream? Yes, I believe that dream was, and still is to be a professional football player. My brother was later developed than his peers, which, which you know, directly, you know, when you're a young kid, uh, affects your physical performance. Everything he talked about back then was football, and he wanted to play for Hafölje, which is a great league, and he really wanted that. And his friends were doing it, and he was envying that they were allowed to do it. But someone told him that he couldn't. You can't do this. Og så gik han jo til fodbold. Han gik jo op i fodbold. Helt vildt. og kæmpede også, synes vi. Det, han, han snakker jo meget om det der med fodbold, at det var noget, som folk ikke troede på og sådan noget. Og det var, det var hårdt nogle gange som forældre at se, fordi han ville det all in, men han blev ligesom ikke set. Han kunne være på en tur, hvor han havde en træner på et tidspunkt, hvor de måske øh, de kørte til Nordsjælland, og så kom han hjem, så havde han ikke spillet et minut på banen. Og det er jo, det er jo virkelig ikke befordrende for ens øh, lyst, og alligevel vil han ikke give op. Altså, han er ikke en quitter. Kan du spille mere? So tomorrow it's going to be quite a lot of wind and most likely current and here where you're gonna swim. So this is too dangerous, and it's also the hypothermia that 
normally will come in about 15 minutes. So the main concern is going to be his safety. And if anything happens, we just drop the cameras and we bring him to, to the shore. Thomas, he, he, he hooked me up on, on this Svalbard trip. And he asked me to come and join him because he wanted to do a half Iceman in there on Svalbard. And Anas assembled the team, and we went up there, super naive about what was going to happen. And it turned out to be a, a proper, proper, proper struggle. You had a good pace. Uh, where did I just drop my mask? The oh, mask is there. He's been shaking and showing signs of hypothermia for the whole time he's been changing. So we are uh, looking quite closely at him. I'd never been riding a bike in snow before. So just riding through the snow in Svalbard, realizing how tough it was and starting to fall over and over again. Yeah. And you know, not only finishing the bike leg, but then having to, you know, run a half marathon afterwards. And I couldn't really imagine finishing that. That was sort of where I realized the challenge that I was facing. We went on for hours and hours, and also way longer than we were expecting. And he pushed himself to the limit. And to me, that was just another doubting moment on this journey, because he obviously had to double that once we reached uh, Antarctica. It's a much bigger wall than I had anticipated. It's not a bad ramp here, is it? Yeah. The question will be, what are the crevasses like? Yeah. It's all an unknown. Yeah. Wow. It's like there's a lot of penguins like, in front of the base. Penguins means level seals. Yeah. 
two years, man. <laughs> it's fucking heavenly. <laughs> Absolutely insane. I mean, what we have done before, up until now, is nothing compared to what this will be. trips that the fittest, most um, hardcore dudes are the ones who cop seasickness Yeah, you worst. told me that, so that was... Yeah, I don't know why. I'm always really seasick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our plan for tomorrow is um, make it to shore, kiss the ground, because you actually, yeah, <laughs> nice. you've actually yeah. finished with the sea passage. And what are we doing? Some practicing tomorrow as well? I think we should. Yeah. Um, we will. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will. We, we, have, we will. Like, yeah. High on the prioritize really learning how not to die. Yeah, that's pretty. That's, that's a good idea. High that's, on the list, that's, isn't that's, it? Yeah. Yeah. Goal number one. Yeah. 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 Come back safe. <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah. This time. Because I'm a big boy. It's gonna be a boost. Yeah. Phil? 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 Hmm. Okay. Doesn't allow landings at all? That's ridiculous. For consideration, er, I mean, for consideration. So it's early it's, next week. It's so not for a decision. Or so it's going one. to be put forward for to a decision to be made. It's not. So we're going to talk Friday about today. experience. Mm -hmm. Maybe send them a copy of your certificates. All them as first responder. And all the. All the experience, it's like over 700 days skiing in Antarctica, uh, almost 150 different mountains climbed. Mm. So in the meantime, um, as the email says, we are not authorised to conduct the project here. So do we say that the project is now on hold, Project Iceman is on hold, until we get confirmation from the Australian Antarctic Division that we can continue? I, I, I think, I feel as if in terms of the morale, I feel like this has been the essence of the project. That it's supposed to be difficult. I mean, even even five, five freaking meters from the shore. I mean, I don't want to postpone it anymore. I mean, we've sailed across the Drake. I've been puking for, you know, two days. And I'm not in control of, you know, you, when you do a regular event or triathlon or whatever, you know the date, you know the time, you know everything. Here I have enough zero clues. I don't even know. I mean, I don't know where I'm going to swim. I don't know where I'm going to bike. I don't know the conditions. I don't know where I'm going to run. I don't know what the weather's going to be like. I don't know how cold it's going to be. I have zero clues and I have to do it within 10 days probably, right? And I've spent, I mean, I've invested everything I have to be here. I have nothing left. Well, I mean, when I first thought of the idea, I, I just no way expected it would be this challenging besides all the physical challenge. I had no money to pay anyone else, so I had to be in charge of everything both the training, but also the logistics, funding, the financial side of things, the legal stuff, the social media. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, follow and subscribe. 
I cut down my financials completely. I lived up my, you know, I lived in my own living room on the couch. Back to reality. Luckily, there's something called Airbnb, so I can cover my expenses. So I'm cleaning this shit up. Everything just went into this project. The first deposit for this trip, I paid all the money that I had, and it was non refundable. In order to get the financials from sponsors, you need sort of awareness. I was not, you know, a public known person, just a random guy with this crazy idea. Uh, I was just a, no a, a nobody. Haven't found a partner yet that really believes just as much in it. And obviously, you know, why would they? And the fact that I'm sitting here doing this This kind of feels kind of pathetic. Sitting in the morning, complaining about my life. Another thing is also to fucking remember why I'm doing this, and that is to prove to do this and to show that limitations are only fucking perceptions. It would be so much easier to know that finances are taken care of and, you know, I've got X amount of dollars to pay for a team and nutrition and nutritionist. You're trying to figure out just physically how to do this, mentally, and then you throw on top of it financially. I've been doing this for over a decade. And when I first started going on this journey, I was like, oh, I'm gonna break a world record. I'm gonna go get financing. I'm gonna get backed by big corporate sponsors. Corporate sponsors would say, we can't afford to associate ourselves with a failure. And I was like, I haven't, I haven't failed yet. But they're like, but you're going to fail. All right. Yes. No, I'm in there. Tack for it. Det er i orden. Det er i orden. Fair enough. Tack for det, jeg taler med. Hey. I knew I was running out of time in terms of getting uh, sponsorships uh, to make the, the expedition happen. So I had to figure out, you know, what else can I do? I did what everybody advised me not to do. I borrowed $100,000. My father thought, you know, I was completely out of my mind. For me, I think at the time, I. I was just looking at doing whatever it would take in order to make the expedition happen so I could give myself the chance of actually doing the Iceman. Operation room. This is the operation room, man. This is where it all started. Dude, I'm, I've seen a bunch of your videos, so this is this is where it happened. <laughs> this is where it happened. Yeah. You know, I love that. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, people make so fun good. of my accent when I speak in English. Oh no, so, dude. So, actually, the video. My <laughs> and Anders. Nice what? to meet you. Hi, Adam. I'm Hi, from man. Norway, actually. Nice to meet you. So, let's sit down. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you the recap of what's happening right now. You told me about your mission and about where you're up to, and everybody was just so down to figure out a way to support you and yeah. to support the mission that you're on. And you mentioned the loan that you've gotten, which yeah. is like the dedication Yeah, just blew us away. That was not really the plan from the beginning at all. I didn't think it was going to be so difficult to get sponsorships and all this. Mm -hmm. The like, bank said, you know, forget about it. They told <laughs> me that a long time ago. I started reaching out to yeah, friends and network and then I actually made investment deals so I actually give them a return of 20% oh, wow. to actually show not only so they are Increase helping me out, yeah. Yeah. but so it's actually a good investment for them. But I just wanted to show that, you know, how much I actually believe that I, you know, I can make this happen. Throughout the years, I've seen so many people go after big audacious goals and some people just do it out of, you know, the show of saying that they're doing this crazy thing, but very few actually end up following through. So the thing that was different about Anders is that he had already made the bet on himself. We also believe that you can make this happen. I really and appreciate it, man. We came with a request. 
Yeah. It would be an honor for us for you to be the first ever Seek Discomfort sponsored human. And we're we're not, you're kidding me, right? No, we're not. <laughs> there was just something about the quality of his spirit and the way he spoke from his heart. I think the most difficult thing in life is that, you know, the belief has to start within yourself. Telling yourself that it is, you know, it is possible and I will do this. And eventually when you do this over and over, you know, we start believing it ourselves. And when you start believing in yourself, ironically, other people believe, start believing in you as, in, in you as well, right? <laughs> there is nothing that we love doing at Yes Theory more than supporting dreams and dreamers. We would like to offer Anders Hoffman a check for 100,000 Danish Krone. Can you talk to us a little bit about the responsibility that you felt when they all set sail to Antarctica? Oh yeah, that kept me up at night. Oh, there's another one. There have been attacks and, and sadly fatalities from leopard seal attacks on humans. <laughs> Something swimming in its environment with, say, a black wetsuit looks very much like a seal. Except seals swim very well, so a human swimming would look like an injured seal. And that, of course, is easy prey. Two of them. Two of them? Yeah, there's one over there. Oh. Over there. Oh, we can't really see. Use that means the words, yeah. that means that's 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 five. <laughs> the words out, right? Said the words out. Was that the the first one we saw? Was that the one that went oh? <laughs> no, that's freaky, man. You go back. Hey, so bro, just want to say that you know, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna have a little swim here. I hope that's okay with you. You over there as well. I feel like, you know, when we arrived, we were talking about it, and then just, like, 50 meters from where we've anchored, they're just, like, five lips. <laughs> that the delegate has approved your authorization variation request. <laughs> Let's go! I'm impressed they did it so fast. Like that's oh, pretty awesome for a government department <laughs> to move that quickly. <laughs> oh that's my god! That's really good news. Yeah. So what this is suggesting is our window is here between 9 p.m. Saturday night. I'm not fussed about the light snowfall. We want to be finished by Sunday 1800. How long you expect to expect it to last with the current conditions up there? Mm. Because we have a, a good window of 24 hours. But I agree with Phil to start basically the earliest we can on Saturday because that will leave 24 hours. Uh, yeah, and I have 36 hours. You have 36 hours. Yeah. That's when you, that's when you So the route starts four kilometers along the coast in front of the ice cliffs, and the swimming route will be accompanied by two boats until Anders reaches the shore in front of the glacial ramp. The route then goes up the glacial ramp, where we've marked a safe route around the crevasses for about five kilometers to reach the main circuit. And the main circuit is two kilometers long in the middle of the glacier in an area that is free of crevasses. And we've placed two camps, each one 
a kilometre apart and from those camps we have two people in each tent that provide safety, cover and pacing for Anders during the project. I have some hot water soup for you. I like that mentality. It's nice living in the dream world. We all live in our own perception of, of the world, right? And that's, that's influenced by everyone. It's influenced by ourselves, our friends and family, our society. And that become the construct of our world and, and sort of the box that we live in. That story. 
But I think the dangerous thing is when you follow the experiences uh, and advice from other people. In this world, people have opinions about anything and everyone. So I only see two major reasons why we're going to have to stop this. Uh, fatigue, exhaustion um, and cold. Uh, I'll, I'll monitor that and that's, that's my role to, to make that call. The other one is um, seals, wildlife yeah. problems. Um, Antrim has a bloody loud whistle and I think we all agreed that if we see a seal we put a time out. Yeah, yeah we'll put him out of the water. There's no need to take that. Um, because when you listen to people around you, especially when you're young, you know, you, you think that comes from somewhere, right? And they, they must have a point. You got it! You don't make those reflective thoughts and are critical towards that input. There's only one person who can find out where my limit is.
Good looking. It's okay, he's wearing shorts. I fucking swam four kilometers. I'm in fucking ice water. up the glacier. I was high-fiving people on the boat, and we had really planned for having this weather window of um, uh, 36 hours. And um, I was like, conditions are looking good. First lap, four kilometers, one hour, 20 minutes. I have 43 laps to go. I've already given up on counting my faults. One thing is for sure, I'm never gonna swim that again, so I need to beat this. It's going to take. I can drive is where you've been skiing or walking snowshoes, so that's the place we should try to harden even more. Okay, is that both north and south? Yes. The swim was physical torture, the bike is just mental torture. <laughs> From the get-go, the bike was just a pain in the ass. At many points, you thought, like, okay, this is 180 kilometers of this. It's not possible. Can you do retention? Can you tell him to bring my spare uh, cycling shoes? Herman had them in the camera bag or the bag with all your, with the camera team's 
uh, sleeping stuff that came up yesterday. Ten kilometers, three hour and fifty-three. That's the conditions. We'll try to walk the track. What do you suggest? How do you feel suggest like? you make a new, new track. Give me some feedback. No more excuses. I know this looks good. Give some feedback. We'll try to uh, to give it a go on the south track. Excuses? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Okay, abandoning South Camp, I join you guys. Hey Nicholas, um, we need you ASAP in South Camp. We made the decision to change the location of the route to the boundary of the snow line, so where it's just bare rock-hard ice and Anders started cycling backwards and forwards on a much smaller track just to keep cycling. The that easiest does. way to do it now is just with the boots but once we get the shovels that's gonna be prime. Yes, the shovel there. Here comes the shovels. <laughs> Fuck we forgot to fucking tell them to bring down the shovels. I told Corey so he, he should bring down yeah. the shovels. How, how can you tell him that? I told him before he left. We could only make it the length that it was because outside of that zone was potential crevasses. And, and that was unexplored areas that was marked as our death zones. We have four hours before dark over. Understood. Yeah, but well, I think you need to drink more as well. How many liters do you go? Have you gone through now? I don't know. You need to drink more. You don't have to worry about me. As long as I have food here, you don't have to worry about me. Our minds were just like after 10 hours in different places. What's he on now, Dino? 41, maybe. 41. Fuck, that's so a long way to go. I know, dude, and that's why we had to do something. Yeah, yeah, get right. shit going. But, uh... He was struggling so much. There was a part of me that was like, okay, when will he break? When will it, when will it stop? There's just a slight voice in the back of the brain, okay, we tried today, conditions aren't working, let's rethink, regroup, and then do it tomorrow. Anton. Come here, we have a female. It's really important that you listen to what I say now and respect everything I say. We are now 13 hours exactly into the Iceman. And we haven't been combined as, as a team at one point. I know a lot of things hasn't gone according to plan, but that's why it's really freaking important that it does from now. I have been going for two hours longer than I've ever been active, and I've only biked 45 kilometers. That means I have 135 kilometers to go and a marathon to run. And uh, that's a fucking lot to do. I don't want to see anyone standing not doing anything. If you're not doing anything, I need you to rest, I need you to eat. That is crucial, because I haven't come here to not finish this, and I have no clue what awaits. I don't know what my state is in, in 12 hours, and at that point in time, you guys need to know where my stuff is, how I get warm, how I get a hot drink, and how I keep on going, because I'm not gonna stop this. But I might get to a point where I can't, you know, figure out what two plus two is. And I don't know that. This is the only time I've seen Anas say, okay, I'm fucked. I need you guys just to be on point if, if this is gonna happen. And I think from that point on, everybody just stepped up. At least I go off to get the gear from, uh, for Anders. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, bring some more gas. Yeah. Where's um, the gas uh, in, in your tents? Yeah. Uh, there should be a few things. Bring bring uh, four two bottles. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't. It's. Uh, I feel like we, I left it a little negative. I don't want it. I don't want it to sort of. You know, come off negative. I, I really appreciate everything you guys have done, and I can't do this without you. And that's just you know. I want to bring this to home together with you guys. So let's do that. You're all good, buddy. We're great. Good. Keep, moving. Keep, Keep cruising, boy. Keep cruising. Dig snow before breakfast. Dig snow before lunch. Dig snow before dinner. And then we'll dig snow all through the night. Yes, it's 5k until now, boys. Yeah? Yeah. Nice one. Look at that, dude. This I borrowed from my neighbor just to save that. Only 55. I thought it was 60. Damn. It's gonna be a long cold night. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna be longer and colder for Anders, but it's still gonna suck balls for us. Off. Right. The night shift begins, huh? Let the night begin. You need okay? Just banged it. When I'm at 90, I would like a break. Okay. Uh, well, hot wait. meal and uh, changing my oh, my where, socks. Where are you at now? I'm at the uh, 78. Okay. Good. A little over now. Good. Keep going, Anna. Hold on. You start raising the risks when you start going through the night. And the colder you get, the more you start to shut down. 21 hours. Yeah. Right now I feel the worst, it's just I want to sleep. So, actually, a year back, uh, I was struggling with, well, I didn't necessarily know it at that time, but I was struggling with anxiety, uh, and that was also coupled with, with stress. Um, and then I, I kind of came into the living room and told my brother, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm not good, I'm not feeling well. Uh, and you know, here's the situation. Um, and then uh, again, it was kind of the, the, <laughs> this conversation with, with, with my brother that made me realize, wow, I, you know, I, this is, uh, first of all, this is okay. Uh, and, and, and second of all, who's your priority? 
you know, ask, asked me that question. And you know, um, you know, the reason why that makes me emotional was that um, you know, I think I think first of all he knows me really well. Um, so he knew at that point I'd you know I'd stretch myself. I just stretched myself, you know, too far from my core. Um, and, uh, you know, he kind of let me know that with, with tough love. Uh, but the reason why, you know, I'm emotional now is that, you know, he, you know, he, he really cares for me. Good job, honey. How are you feeling? The warmth? Yeah. How's this holding up? Is it working? Yeah. He's brewing coffee too right now. Okay. Have a sip. Yeah. Just so, I'm just looking forward to the sun comes again. Yes. Anders was cycling 200 meters and back 200 meters for 20 hours. And how he persevered, I don't know. ultimate low, I had that conversation with myself. What if I didn't make it? I was going to tell my brother that I couldn't. I can't do this. where I reminded myself of why I'm doing this. I wanted to show the limitations our perceptions. I just don't think that I really realized that I had to break my own perceptions of where my limit was. It would probably be quite a nice change of scenery for you, for your head. It's firm enough up there for you to ride, definitely. Go up. Cool. Let's go up. We got our, our stuff together. We changed the tactics. We could see another day. And then we uh, went to the, the upper track. And I remember this was not filmed. We were like giving each other high fives and you're like shouting because the track was good up there. So suddenly, you know, whoa, we can't do this. I was on the load out there, but I'm going to be in the high up. Yeah. 
And then, um, you know, before we know it, uh, the wind picked up quite significantly. <laughs> Thirty-five hours and thirty minutes total time so far. <laughs> oh. Mm. You just level up and then uh... my right knee is so fucked. I've been having troubles with the knee for now um, a month and a half, and there is only one month until we take off. So that I mean, I have to do everything to to fix it. In November and December, that were, those were tough months. So I think my parents saw that, and then they saw that as you know, am I you know. Am I taking care of myself? Am I healthy through this process? You know, I, I just clearly remember that conversation in my apartment. Why does it have to be now? I could just postpone it. Yeah, I think I was like 2% on, you know, just breaking completely. So, New Year's Eve. Home. I can't remember since I had a long bike ride because of uh, the troubles with my knee. So, you know, having a night like this where you really just want to relax, party like everyone else. I, I could feel the pressure. The amount of risk that my brother had taken. Some frustration that I experienced was this um, somewhat fear of the unknown. I was worried for his knee. Two or three months before, I'm not seeing him move. And, and that worries me. I was worried that we would get there and uh, he, he would not be able to run.
36 and a half hours into the Iceman, which meant we had passed the weather window. The team knew that, but I wasn't really focused on that at all. In my mind, I, would, I just wanted to finish it. and to take care of myself. I found myself making bad decisions. And I had to tell him, I need to sleep. And in my mind, I was just like, you're not fucking leaving me now. If Anton tells me I need a break, then Anton really needs a break. This is 500 meters away. This was dark, heavy winds. You couldn't see anything. We had to rely on our GPS. I had this realization where I was like, it's too dangerous to be out. that I was just gonna walk and everybody else would go back to their tents for safety. And so I walked with Ollie for seven kilometers. It was pitch dark. You couldn't see two meters ahead of yourself. I was getting dizzy. It was difficult for me just to walk. We quickly went through the, the pros and cons of, of continuing at the point. It wasn't a race anymore, it was it was basically just survival. Anders? Yeah. Can you give us an update? We have this blizzard. And uh, I was out walking with Oli and, and we uh, decided to postpone it three hours until everybody is more rested. Um, because right now time is not time doesn't matter anymore now it's just now it's just important for me to finish this and uh, yeah we would just be risking it if we kept on going just the two of us Anton Anton this is Corey do you copy it's not good that they have radio silence I don't understand that should be uh, ahead of things. It's been a long time since we've been through that. It could be because they, they could they could have run out of battery. Yeah, well, and that tent is good to cover in snow, which makes sense. Yeah, I don't think we're getting all of those. I remember waking up at one point being completely like fixated by the weight of snow on top of the tent. So Corey had to dig the snow from the tent. You just hear the shovel and 
in the meantime, you know that if he hits like the 10, just scratch it, uh, it's game over. around 8 o'clock in the evening. Greg and I got back to the boat. I started dumping all the footage before I need to go up to reach you guys again. I tried calling Phil and I got no answers. And then suddenly I just hear like scratches, like ah, no solo travels, not safe. And to give a little context, we had the boat anchored up in a bay where we had six safety ropes to all angles holding the boat in one place. Holy fuck. What? What? White line's nearly about to snap. Oh no. Right, um... What do we do? And then one of the ropes snaps. It was just panic on board. Greg's try to scramble some ropes to see how can we solve this problem. And while he's outside in winds way over 100 kilometers an hour, this rope snapped. I could see the fear in both Cat and Greg's eyes because now it's serious trouble. And then another rope snaps. Cat picks up the radio and calls in Mayday. Like Mayday is the last, last thing. We're slamming against the rocks. And then Cat tells me with straightest face, Herman. Stop filming. I need you to jump on land. We need this rope that we have used to block the ice. I need you to go up on land and toss it to me. I, I tell Kat, I, I, I'm not sure I can do that, handle that task. We get a small glimpse of a bit slower wind. Uh, at that point, I was like, fuck it, I need to try. So I jump in the Zodiac pull myself across. I just basically had to jump from the Zodiac onto land. So I was soaked. I started crawling along the, the land because of the wind. There was no chance to, to be able to walk. And I start untying this rope and it's so tight. While I was reaching the rope, my hat and my mittens blew off. Finally, I kind of thought just slowly with one hand loosening the rope and then pause it while laying on the ground and I start crawling back to a big rock where I could shelter. I was so scared, and this was the first point where I, I actually feared for my life. And I lay there for a, what felt like an eternity. so broken in my life, both physically and mentally. Anton, do you copy? We ran out of food. 
and we had an ice cave that we built early on as a surplus for us if we ever needed to go and, and gather more food. looking around and then looking back at you and being like, is this where it is? Is this it? I realized that we, there was no way that we we're gonna get it. I do have something I want to say. There was a moment with Anas and I that I will never forget. Um, as an independent artist, I was going through a really hard time. And <laughs> I was coming home uh, for Christmas. It was a very dark time for me and a lot of thoughts about giving up, or is it all worth it? And I hadn't really said much that, that those days up until Christmas Eve. But someone asked me like, how are you? And then we started talking and then in, in, <laughs> in our family, it's instantly like, this is what you should do. This is, <laughs> this is the plan. We can work this out and we'll, you know, uh, or Anson, <laughs> Anson will always have the good questions and like, but you don't need this. Why do you need this? And, uh, and I keep thinking like, you know, I have to have the good argument. I have to, I have to defend myself in my case. And as I was doing that, I just totally like lost it. I started, like I got a panic attack basically. And I remember, <laughs> I just remember being on my couch and like had, I remember thinking like, you're about to pass out. So I like, I put my head between my legs and I remember like the whole room just froze and no one knew like what to do. <laughs> and Anna's just like runs over and grabs my shoulders and just shakes me and be like, and he starts crying. And like, just I've never seen Anna's like that. I just felt like he just understood. <laughs> he just understood. He keeps telling me that what I'm doing is so much harder because to him what he's doing is he's the only one, but what I'm doing is like there's millions of us. So for me to stand out and, and do my thing is a, is a completely different Iceman, as he says. Cory, Cory, Anton, Anton. Anton, Anton, Cory. How is Anders doing? How are you guys doing? We're good. We were all keyed in the same water bottle. And now we had a good support for us in the middle. Sounds like brotherhood. Happy to hear that. The storm was gone, and then suddenly nobody was doing anything. And then I felt 
We cannot wait anymore. Time is 2.32. We've been here for about 27, 28 hours. But we made it. The weather is calm. We can trust the weather now. I just told Anas, 15 minutes, you're gonna meet out here, and then we're gonna finish this. I think he was caught up in the struggle at that moment, running on a glacier. And I realized that you don't see what we see right now. And what we're seeing is that you have 10 kilometers left on something people thought was impossible And you need to realize that yourself as well. He needed that. In that moment, I had this um, feeling of just um, finding my purpose there. Something in me just says that Anna sh shut down for these years, probably to figure out when am I going to press that button. And that happened in Antarctica. It started as a calm morning, and it ends with a calm morning. Seconds, 30 seconds, come on, come on. I just have to remember that I can do so much fucking more than I think I can, that I allow myself to believe. This was just as much a project to test himself of how much he could believe in himself when nobody else did. He now know that that voice comes from a truth. Seventy-two hours and fifty-four minutes. We fucking did it. Hey! Andres is giving people a gift. He's giving people the gift of hope. And his willingness to suffer intentionally gives people hope on their journey where they're not suffering intentionally. That's the greatest gift you can give anybody. We 
we get contact with Jutalian base, uh, they're telling us to stay calm and they will get people uh, and come help us. Uh, the Marine guys were like, okay, this is not safe for you anymore. All of you guys need to come back to the base. Uh, we wait there while the divers do their job and attach on new ropes and try to pull the boat slowly back. Greg ended up being swam back to the boat with the divers because our skipper Kat, she refused to leave the boat, which was eventually a pretty heroic uh, uh, thing to do. I get back to the base and I was just sitting there alone. I was so in shock still, I think. So I just ate, got a room uh, and I just lay down. It was the first time in over 48 hours where I could actually sleep. So I, I wake up naturally early in the morning, like six or something. And as I walk out the door, I turn around the corner and I just see Anders. Suddenly I just hit me and I was like, oh fuck. Because then I realized also you guys have been uh, on the glacier when this whole thing has happened down by the boat. And you guys probably needed to be rescued as well, was my <laughs> first initial thought. So I was just, oh fuck, you guys got rescued. I mean, does that mean the whole race was just canceled and stuff? And I was asked, I just asked Anders Blin, what happened, dude? Are you okay? And he was like, yeah, I just finished the race. <laughs> and I was like, the fuck you mean you just finished the race? <laughs> and I was so confused, but at the same time, I was so relieved that kind of he was safe. And he was like, yeah, the rest of the guys are uh, kind of in the, the food area. And uh, I walked out and saw the whole gang sitting in the, the dinner area. And it was just the most surreal moment. Everyone was just safe, everyone smiling. I, you got something which ended up with my, in, with my bag coming home from the expedition. And that is the tag from the Chilean base you got when you finished the race. <laughs> and it's been two years now. I've had this. I haven't said anything to you, but I, I've always had this to, to bring you <laughs> when we finally meet again. And this belongs to you. Man, folk siger, hvorfor er det ikke med dansk, men det er bare ikke det samme. Så det er limitation til abscepsis, det er det, jeg vil You know, it all came from it being ironic that, you know, during the Iceman and, and, you know, going out and doing speaks at primary schools and to young kids, I'm telling them to pursue their own Iceman in life, when the fact is I've not pursued my own Iceman in life. Uh, well, here you go. <laughs> yeah, so Project 30. What's Project 30? Project 30 is um, pursuing my childhood dream of becoming a professional football player. And what's 30? 30 is the age I'm restarting my football career. About to do this shit, sick of sitting here. Only got a couple years before I disappear. I don't know, just a man. But there's more inside me than these people understand. Oh, I think it's time I went and found a way. I'm looking for something different. To clear my mind I'm headed to some place distant That I might not find And I know That you're worried I won't make it But no Don't worry I'm gonna make it home I could die, I'ma do it though Hope my life becomes a symbol of what's beautiful Take it there, make it back 
All these people think I'm crazy, I'm okay with that Oh, I think it's time I went and found a way I'm looking for something different to clear my mind Don't worry, I'm gonna make it home